Coach, what was the, the difference in the 22-4 to four run that you guys had uh, early in the second half, kind of giving you separation? What did you guys do then that made you work the other? I just thought we were really good defensively. Um, with the exception of like a seven-minute stretch in the first half, I thought we guarded better than we've guarded all season. You know, uh, Georgia Tech is, is a very difficult team to defend because they have unbelievable skilled players and the movement in their offense, it makes it hard to stay with players because you got to see man and ball at all times and you, you got to stay disciplined and focused. And I just, uh, I just thought we were really, really good defensively in the second half. We were fantastic. Uh, Leaky Black, he's, it's going to be hard to find somebody in the country that's defending better than Leaky. And Ant Harris was somebody that uh, didn't get into the game on Wednesday against Michigan, and his number was called. He was fantastic in his 14 minutes defensively, and I was just so proud of the team, how the toughness and the grit, the will and the want to. One of the things that we talked about all week was validating our performance on Wednesday with a, with a good performance here on Sunday, and I was very, very proud of them. Your players talked about that validation aspect, said you really pushed that this week. What was the purpose? It was because, you know, I, Wednesday was, um, we played very well. But it didn't mean anything if we didn't show up and play well again today. And what I talked about is, you know, Carolina basketball is, you know, a lot of people came up and uh, after Wednesday's game and they said, wow, that was, that was Carolina basketball. That was a Carolina win. And I told them, I said, Carolina basketball is showing up on Sunday every time you, you step out there on the floor. And, and that um, I wanted them, I gave them the definition of validation in terms of proving. And I said, prove to yourself, prove to this program, prove to people that the way that you played defense and the energy and the effort and where it was, the way that you shared the basketball on Wednesday night wasn't a one night thing that this is, this is who we are, this is our team. And I just kept talking to them about that throughout the week, and um, I'm just really proud of them, their effort today. Huber, that's, that's two really good second halves, the Michigan game and, and then today. I mean, I guess it's a sign of a pretty good team that you put together second halves like that. What, what do you think you guys are finding at halftime or maybe adjusting or, or doing better to, to close these games out convincingly? Well, it's not necessarily just the second half for me. I just, um, I'm really proud of the, you know, with the exception of the game against Tennessee, I feel like we've always stayed in it. We've always fought back. We've always been um, handled runs by opposing teams. We've always stepped up when we needed to step up, and uh, tonight we needed to on the road. I really believe that our, um, our win against College of Charleston being on a, a true road game really gave us confidence, really gave us life to come here. This is a very tough place to play against a really, um, really good team. And I think our experience of playing on the road, um, we drew from that and it gave us confidence to be able to uh, play well in the second half, but to be able to win here at Georgia Tech. You're playing both guards, RJ and Caleb, a lot together all season so far. And they're both scoring, quick handling the ball. What do you like about playing two guards like that and speak to their performance tonight? Well, they, you know, I, I didn't, I couldn't take them off the floor. <laughs> they were just too good, and they've been, they've been really good throughout the entire year. You know, one of the reasons that I love playing two point guards. Before I got into coaching, I never looked at it that way. And then we had Joel Berry and, and uh, Marcus Page, and I said, wow, that's pretty good. That's nice to have two ball handlers out there that you know you can never be pressed, you can never be taken out of your offense, and you got multiple playmakers that can make plays for your team. And that's what we have in RJ and Caleb. At any given time, those are the guys that can make shots, but they also can, can consistently create shots. And I think tonight they had 10 assists to maybe three or four turnovers. It was a two-to-one assist to turnover ratio, four turnovers. And so... You know, from your lead guards who have the ball in their hands a lot and they're taking care of the basketball, distributing and not turning the ball over, they've been great all year and I'm very, very proud of them. To allow a 19-2 to run on the road in ACC play and still win a game, what kind of extra layer of something do you guys have to be able to deal with that? Well, this, this, you know, I've said before that it even goes past, you know, having a sense of validation for this team and for this program. I, I've said before that there's a, there's a, um, a sense of urgency with this group to be relevant. You know, they're tired of hearing about my stories and Coach Mays and Coach Lebo and Coach Sullivan about 
winning on the road in the ACC and making big shots and making big plays. They want to have their own stories and their own testimonies. And um, one of the things that I talked to them about uh, before the game is that one of the things that I was so happy about on Wednesday was that it wasn't a, a story of mine or any one of the coaches. Like they got to see and they got to personally experience their own stories, their own testimonies, their own memories after after Wednesday's game. And so they're building on that after winning today. And so that's the thing that I'm really happy for them about. Hubert, after those games in Connecticut, you were talking about what was going to change and everything. How pleased are you with the way you know these, these two games have gone and the way that they responded to your challenge? I, I really am. Uh, we've got I, you know we've got great kids in that locker room, and um, they were. First of all, Tennessee is an unbelievable team with an outstanding coach, and they beat us. Um, but the players in the locker room, they were they were as disappointed and as upset um, as I was. And I'm so thankful that after that loss, we we did have to play a game against UNC Asheville, but then it gave us an opportunity to have a week of practice. And I think sometimes you play in so many games, you're in game mode, but where you get better is in practice. And so from that UNC Asheville game to Michigan, we had eight days off. And um, even though that it was you know, during the Thanksgiving break, we had an opportunity just to reinforce our foundation and build principles that we had talked about all summer and all preseason. And we were able to get back to our foundation. So I'm really thankful that, that we had those eight days not to have to really prepare for a game that we could practice and get better at the things we needed to improve on. Take one more if there was one. Hubert, Lee Kian and Anthony both spoke about the impact of your positive praise and what is, how it's affected them. Um, in terms of your coaching style philosophy, is that intentional? Is that just who you are? How would you describe it? That is intentional. I, I love to encourage. I think it's important to encourage people. I, I don't think you can, you don't have to look very far to get somebody to be critical of who you are. And it's all filtered through my own experience. I, I remember growing up and Everyone, you can't play at Carolina, you can't do this, you can't do that. And growing up, I had I had two people that said you could play at North Carolina. It was my dad and my football coach. That's it. <laughs> and so, you know, I just, um, I love to encourage. I love uh, um, to build people up. And um, I like to hold everyone, the players, and myself accountable. But... Um, it's amazing what can happen when you just encourage somebody, when you tell somebody good job or I really appreciate your effort. It just lights people up. Everybody needs it. And um, I, I really, a part of my coaching, a huge part of my coaching is encouraging the players. I tell them that uh, when we watch film, I want two things to happen. One, to learn, and two, to encourage. We never watch film to, to call somebody out. I even stole something from uh, Monty Williams, who's the head coach of the Phoenix Suns. I played with him two years at uh, the New York Knicks. One of the things that he constantly says, he calls his players up, and I love that. You know, he may hold them accountable, but it's, it's built and, uh, with encouragement, and I think that's, that's, the, that's the best way to coach, and that's, that's what I love to do. All right, thank you, Coach Davis. We'll get Coach Pastor in a couple things.